Okay, so um, let's. Uh, this will be a two-part lecture, and uh, let's finish what we can finish in one hour, and then we continue later. So I will uh, start with the, a simple introduction, and then um, the one-dimensional case, as uh, mentioned by Prof. Nanda earlier. And then uh, we proceed with the n-dimensional case, and uh, we uh, focus on what are called the cell and homogenized problems. Okay, so earlier uh, we were um, introduced to the topic, to the, to the field of homogenization. So uh, homogenization has been first uh, developed uh, for periodic structures. No, like the wall of our <laughs> venue is periodic, right? As you can see, we have repeated uh, cells or elements. And often, the size of the period, uh, say epsilon, is small compared to the size of the whole medium or material. And what we do is uh, take an asymptotic analysis as the epsilon or the period goes to zero. I think uh, that one, for instance, in 3D. And we have some uh, property, you no, know, say um, omega epsilon property of the material that we want to to study. And given the microscopic uh, description of the of this problem, usually through a PDE, we want a macroscopic or effective property of the material or the structure. So, however, nowadays, homogenization is not limited to periodic structures, I believe. So, even non-periodic structures, uh, there is uh, homogenization, but I am not into uh, that. So, I am uh, into periodic homogenization. So, for the objectives of uh, this lecture, again, I will show the multi-scale asymptotic expansion method in the one-dimensional and n-dimensional cases for a model diffusion problem. We will derive the corresponding cell and homogenized problems. And lastly, we will examine the properties of the cell and homogenized problems. OK. So this is our problem, a stationary temperature field in a non-homogeneous rod with periodic structure. So I think you are familiar with um, uh, the heat equation, of course. So. So say you have um, yeah, a domain X, uh, 0, 1, interval 0, 1. So it is governed by this PDE. So this is homogeneous, where our K is the constant um, conductivity. OK? So this is the easiest, I think, PDE, the heat equation. So what, when we are talking of stationary temperature field or steady, temperature field, then, of course, uh, it will be uh, not time dependent. And so we will have that uh, as f of x. So we take this as 0, and we have f of x. But here, we have a non-homogeneous rod with periodic structure. So the conductivity is not any more constant, but a variable thermal conductivity, right? So we also have u, of course, our temperature distribution. We have the length of our rod in here. We take it as 1. And we have epsilon as small positive parameter. So you can, um, we can have this uh, picture of the one-dimensional uh, rod, no? non-homogeneous. It, it may consist of two or more um, materials, uh, type 1, type 2. And then you repeat it in a rod. Okay. I will also show that uh, on Friday when I talk about uh, population dynamics, uh, homogenization in population dynamics. Okay. Of course, we impose a Dirichlet boundary condition. U of 0 is G0, U of 1 is G1. Okay? So that is our main problem. Okay, so let me again state our assumptions for our problem. The rod is of periodic structure. The thermal conductivity, A epsilon, is periodic, and it is given by epsilon. Uh, let us take it as one, as 1 over n, where n is a large natural number. So A epsilon of x is defined to be A of x over epsilon. And we assume that A of y is a one periodic function, which is positive and differentiable, for simplicity. 
But A epsilon can be um, not differentiable. It can be discontinuous, actually. Okay, but for simplicity, let us take it as, as differentiable. So these are our assumptions for our problem. Okay, again, our goal, our goal is to solve for you when epsilon goes to zero. Okay, so that's very clear. Now, what if we use numerical methods? Can we use numerical methods? Okay, so we can use, but it is practically, I mean, impossible, no? So the degrees of freedom or the uh, number of elements no, for a certain accuracy, a level of accuracy will be one over epsilon. And if epsilon is very big, okay, so the degrees of uh, freedom is uh, large. So numerically, it is, um, well, yeah, okay, <laughs> possible, but practically, it's impossible, okay? So when we say it's practical, so it's not practical, actually, to use numerical methods for that, okay? All right, so let us begin the multi-scale asymptotic expansion method by constructing the solutions U in the form, which is called an ansatz. It's actually um, series expansion in, in epsilon. So it is given by U equal to U0 of xy plus epsilon U1 of xy equal plus epsilon squared U2 and so on. Okay, um, we identify here two variables. You see x and y. Now, what is x? That is actually our slow or macroscopic variable, while y is our fast or microscopic variable. And we take that as to be x over epsilon. Ui of xy for each i from 0 to uh, infinity are periodic with respect to the variable y with period y1. Okay, okay, is it okay? Our ansatz no? and our um, assumptions on our um, variables and the uh, UI. Okay, so let us continue. Okay, so we know this formula for the total derivative of some function of xy no? with respect say to x. So it is given uh, by this formula. Because y is given to be x over epsilon, okay? So by our differentiation uh, formula for the total derivative, we have this. So we will use this. Okay, um, I will write again our problem. <clears throat> okay. And uh, with that, we can what? We can, of course, use our differentiation formula. And our u, I will write our ansatz here. Okay. And so, with this as our, say, f, no? So we can have, um, using that formula, Okay, just by substitution, okay? So we have, and then u is given by this, okay? So by just substitution, we have the following, okay? So I will uh, somehow rearrange, so, so one epsilon. Right? U, okay. I will uh, need to uh, rearrange that uh, term. Okay. So I will have some pattern. You can see the pattern. So this is the, the first no, for u0. Okay, by our formula, you take f as your u0 first, okay. Ah, 
with respect to x. And so on. Okay. Okay. And that will be equal to f of x. Okay. Okay. So I will not compute algebraically, manipulate. <laughs> and so we will have just a series expansion in epsilon by rearrangement, okay? For instance, where do you get the first term? So you just get the first term from this and this one, right? So you have epsilon to the negative two and then that first term, partial, okay, okay? All right, so the rest you get from the, uh, from the formula, okay? It's okay? All right. Okay, so by rearrangement, we have that. And for homogenization purposes, what do we need? For homogenization purposes, what do we do when we homogenize? We take our period epsilon to approach zero. So which of the terms will matter to our purpose, to our homogenization purpose? So only which terms? Only, only what? <laughs> only the first three terms will matter, okay? And so, if we take this as, well, it's an equation, and so by comparing coefficients, it's a series expansion in epsilon, so we just have, compare, compare, compare coefficients, and so we will just have the following, okay? So the first term, the coefficient uh, epsilon to the negative two, that will be zero, no? On the right-hand side, okay? Epsilon to the negative one, the coefficient will go to zero. The coefficient of epsilon to the zero, which is one, it, it will be equal to f, okay? And we have a system of linear differential equations for u0, u1, u2, with respect to y. And let us consider x as a parameter here. Okay, is that clear? Okay, so the next will be how to solve this system of linear differential equations. Okay. Okay, so let us begin with the first one, step one. No, but before that, let us introduce the what is called the mean value or period average operator m, which is defined to be the integral of, uh, say, a function f from 0 to 1, okay, with x and y considered as independent, okay? So the first step is to consider the first equation, okay, the first of the three equations. So why is that so, that we have u0 of xy is just some function v0 in x only? So we have u0 of xy equal to v0 of x, so why is that so? Okay, so let us see. Let us start with the left, okay? So the partial with respect to y of that quantity is zero, meaning a of y, partial of u zero with respect to y, okay, is what? It's, it's what? Partial of y is zero, so it must be, say, a function of x. So let us consider that, say, z zero of x, okay? And so we will have just the partial of u0 with respect to y is equal to c0 of x over a of y, okay? And then we use the operator m. We apply the operator m on both sides. So what do we have? Okay, so say m, okay, that is just the integral, right, of the partial of u0 with respect to y, dy, from 0 to 1, okay? And uh, what is that? That is just, of course, u0 of xy, right? From y is 0 to y is 1, okay? But what is our assumption on ui, in particular u0? 
it's periodic, right? So it will cancel out and we will have zero, correct? Okay, now on the right hand side, we just have the m of um, a of y, right? Z zero of x, okay? And that is equal to zero, okay? But, okay, this cannot be zero, right? A of y, if we take it zero, so, so the conductivity is zero, so it's none. So we cannot take this as zero. That would mean that C zero of x is zero, right? And so we just have um, partial of u0 uh, with respect to y to be 0. And therefore, it's constant, okay? It's, uh, so u0 of xy is just, say, okay, of course you can take it as u0 of x, but let me just call it v0 of x, okay? It can be, you can use u0 of x. Okay, no problem with that slide. So we are finished with that slide. Step two, of course, we have the second differential equation. So we just, actually we did not solve for u zero. We just say it's just a function of x. No, we haven't solved for u zero. It's a constraint for u zero, which just, it says that it's a function of x only. Okay, so step two, I will, uh, I mean the, the results are there, but let us see how, why, why is that so? Uh, okay, so uh, what do I need? Okay, so I think I need just to write again that, because I need this, u0 of xy is equal to v0 of x. Okay. So why is that so? That uh, we were able to compute u1 in just, um, in terms of, uh, uh, v0. Okay, so the first um, equation is just the second linear uh, uh, PDE uh, earlier. So, how can we simplify this one? Okay, for the first term, you see partial of u0 with respect to y. But we know that u0 is just a function of x. And therefore, the first term is 0. So, the first line will tell us that, okay, do I need to copy? No? Okay, so partial with respect to y, I'll just, uh, what is left, no? A of y, partial of u0 with respect to x, plus partial of u1 with respect to y, is equal to zero, okay? So what do we do here? Okay. We just do what we did earlier, right? So, diba? I sorry, it's in, in Filipino. So sorry, right? Okay. So we just uh, do the same earlier. So we have this a of y. Sorry, a of y partial of u with respect to x plus partial of u one with respect to y. Okay. The partial of with respect to y is zero. So say we it is just a function of x, say c1, okay? And therefore, okay, uh, remember this is v0, right? So I can write it as dv0 with respect to x, it's just uh, an ordinary derivative, no? It's just a, a function of x. So plus partial of u1 with respect to y, is equal to C1 of X, A of Y, okay? So what do we do here? Again, we apply the mean value operator again, okay? And uh, what do you think, what will happen? What will happen here? Our U1 is again periodic. Correct? And so if we do like uh, earlier, this becomes zero, correct? And so we will have what? Ah, but I need to, 
to express that as I don't know partial of uh, u1 with respect to y. So I need okay, sorry. So I I must uh, yeah okay okay. So I will leave uh, like that. Okay. I need this later. So but as uh, we have uh, seen, okay, applying M on uh, both sides, we will have in a similar manner as earlier, we have something like this, okay? Because U1 is uh, periodic with respect to Y. And so I will have C1 of X, Okay, I will have C1 of X to be equal to A hat, DB0 with respect to X, where A hat is just equal to 1 over the mean value of A of Y inverse. Okay, right? Okay, and that is why I have A hat there. No? A hat to be equal to 1 over M of A of Y inverse. Okay, so using uh, this uh, and this one, okay, by substitution, right, I will have the partial of U1 with respect to Y, okay, will be equal to that expression no? by substitution by using asterisk and double asterisk, right? And so, if I have that, integrating uh, that will give me u1 of xy to be equal to n1 of y, derivative of b0 with respect to x plus v1 of x, where that is integrating uh, from 0 to y, okay? Both sides. And so I will have u1 of xy to be equal to n1 Derivative of B0 with respect to X plus B1 of X. Where N1, okay, you can uh, easily see that it's equal to uh, that expression. Yes, I did not understand, sorry. No, why do you use in the expansion? Okay. Ah, why did I use? So, well, I, I must consider two variables, one which is X, our macroscopic variable, yeah? Okay, so, so the slide is clear now, okay? So let me just write that one because we need again in the next slide. Okay, so what we have we done with this? We have expressed u1 in terms of u0, which is v0, right? Okay. So, will it be the same for u2? Okay, that's the question. So, that's the next step. Okay, so we have step three, the third um, differential equation, of course, the last. Okay, for our purpose. Okay, so what we do is uh, we integrate again from zero to one or we apply the mean value operator. Okay, so wha why is, which is missing now? Okay, the second, this one, it is now gone. Why? Why is that this term is gone? What is left is this one, right? This one, which I take the, I mean, apply the operator M, okay? So why is it gone, the second term? Our, our assumptions, no? On U1, U2, and A also is periodic, okay? So this term, by applying the mean value operator, will be gone. Okay? Okay? By the periodicity assumption. Okay, so. 
Okay. So with that, let us see. Okay. So by substitution, this will be V0. And by substitution again, this will be this expression. That's why I wrote it. Okay. So simple algebra, okay, will lead us to the expression, the next expression, which is this one. You will, can, you, you will see it will cancel out, okay, with partial of u1 with respect to y given us this expression, okay, because this is in terms of the derivative of v0 with respect to x. No? Okay? Also, the, this term is uh, v0. Okay. Okay. And so we have this ex, um, equation no? describing our homogenized property. Okay. Specifically, this is called the homogenized problem or homogenized equation, while A hat is called the effective thermal conductivity that we want. Okay? So starting from A epsilon, which is variable thermal conductivity, we come up with A hat, which is what? A hat just depends on, again, it's the mean value of A of Y inverse. Okay? There's no X there, right? There's no X in A hat. And of course, we must uh, also do the boundary conditions because u0 is just v0. So v0 of 0 is equal to g0. And v0 of 1 is equal to g1. Okay? So because our ansatz, no? Uh, satis, I mean, we, we assume to it to be equal to u. And then we were able to solve for uh, u0, no? The constraint for u0, we were able to solve for u1 in terms of uh, u0, u2 in terms of u0, and so this will satisfy our original problem. Okay? Any question with that? Because that will end my first part. I mean the, the one-dimensional case. Okay, but we will continue with the n-dimensional case. But, but the idea is the same, actually. Okay? The idea is the same. Starting from the ansatz and how we solve the equation. Okay, so did we solve already for our original goal? Okay, so the, the problem is this is still an equation involving a derivative, right? So we still have to solve this, right? Okay. So later you will see that with um, conditions, proper conditions, this will be solvable. Okay. With sufficient conditions. No? Okay. So any problem with the one-dimensional? Okay. So I'll go to the yeah, n-dimensional case. All right. Okay, so earlier also we uh, you have saw the you have seen no the model problem of conductivity. Okay, it is given by so in n dim dimension n so negative divergence a epsilon of x gradient of u epsilon is equal to f of x in your domain omega. Let us impose a Dirichlet, Dirichlet boundary condition. Okay, u epsilon is zero on the boundary of omega. So in here, A epsilon is the conductivity, which is a matrix, okay? And U epsilon, of course, is the unknown function, maybe temperature or electric potential, okay. Okay, so of course, the thermal conductivity varies periodically, okay? So I will lay down our assumptions for uh, clarity. Okay, so again, omega is a bounded periodic domain with period epsilon. It's a very pos uh, small positive number. Uh, let us call y 
the unit periodic cell, also called the reference cell. Okay, so if you look at our wall, any, okay, so one <laughs> square and the, uh, okay, will be a reference cell, and then you repeat that in all directions. Okay, that is, this is the best example of a periodic uh, structure <laughs> in 2D. <laughs> okay, so maybe it was, uh, I mean, this, this structure was made because there is some acoustic, uh, you know, it, it has holes, actually, I, I saw it has holes, maybe for acoustic, no? Um, considerations. Yes. Okay. So, this is repeated, no? Repeated uh, periodically. So, the conductivity varies periodically, again, with period epsilon, and it is a matrix. A of Y, where Y is in X uh, is equal to X over epsilon in capital Y in our reference cell. Let us assume that A is bounded and positive definite, meaning okay. Uh, earlier you saw this condition. So how do we call this again? Elliptic. Um, this is elliptic boundedness, and then uniform. Okay. So sometimes, yeah. Or CVT, okay. Yeah, and this is the boundedness. No? Ah. ah, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Ah, okay, this one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, sorry, sorry for the confusion. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. So, okay. Again, yeah, we assume that A epsilon of X is equal to A of X over epsilon. Okay. Okay. So, let me just uh, be clear again that X is our macroscopic variable. It tells where the position of your point in the whole domain. That is X. While Y will give you the position of your point in your reference cell, capital Y. Okay? That is the difference between the two, uh, macroscopic and microscopic variable. Okay? So let us continue. So that is an example of a periodic domain. Okay? But I think the best example is the wall. So I don't need to show any periodic domain. Very nice wall. Okay, so again... Okay, let me just uh, again uh, repeat uh, what has been uh, said earlier, that your PDE can be expressed in this form, okay? That negative, uh, this uh, thing, you can write it in this form. And of course, again, our goal is to solve for the above problem, U, in, uh, U epsilon, of course, as the period epsilon goes to zero, so that we will have some global or average behavior of our domain omega. Okay? So we keep repeating the, our, <laughs> our goal, our aim, okay, for clarity. Okay. All right, so again, with multi-scale asymptotic expansion method, you express your solution U epsilon as a power series in epsilon. You can write it in summation form, okay? And uh, again, UI, each UI is a Y periodic uh, function with respect to Y, all right? Okay. All right. So this differentiation formula will help us. You are familiar with this, no? with this formula, which is just the same as uh, in uh, the one-dimensional case. So you have the gradient of UI. You can express it in this form. Okay, so here, uh, yeah, how do you call that? Nabla Y and Nabla X denotes the partial derivative with respect to uh, y and x, okay? With respect to the first and second variable, okay? So, of course, uh, all right. 
Okay, so with that, we will have, again, we will repeat, but I will not write anymore, unlike earlier, okay? So we will just have a series expansion in epsilon. So you do the same as earlier in the one-dimensional case, and of course, just consider that we have uh, uh, negative divergence, no, okay? It's not anymore in a one-dimensional uh, case, okay? So we have the same uh, series expansion in epsilon, okay? And so we just uh, have to, again, equate coefficients, okay, on the left and on the right, and we will have another uh, system of linear uh, uh, differential equations, okay? So that, <laughs> I think I will be repeating uh, some more steps, no? And again, for homogenization purposes, we just consider the first three terms, okay? And so, we will just have the following three equations. So let me write the first one. We will uh, try to solve. Are you writing the equations? Okay, yes, okay. Are we giving them the slides also? Okay. Yeah, um, I can give mine. Okay. Okay, so let's move on. Okay, this is okay? This slide is okay? Okay, so let us uh, start with the first. Okay, so why, again, do we have that u0 of x, y is just a function of x, u0 of x, so y? Okay, so let us take a look at this. So we multiply our um, uh, equation by u0. Okay, and then we integrate by parts. Okay, so we will have what in this case? So multiplying uh, both sides no? by u0 and integrating okay, by parts, we have just the over y, okay, we take the integral over y of a of y okay okay, and that is equal to zero, right? okay, multiply both sides by u zero and then integrate by parts. So we have that. Okay, so if you have this equality, what does this mean? Okay, what does this mean? If we have this to be zero, okay, we have, okay, so this might be zero, this equal to zero, but what is our assumption on A? Our assumption in A is it is it is positive definite. Okay? So since A is positive definite, okay, so we will have is equal to zero. And so what do we mean by that? That the derivative with respect to y of u zero is zero. Meaning, yeah, u0 of x, y is just a function of x. And we can write, say, u0 of x or v0 of x if we want. Okay, so again, we just have a constraint for u0. Okay, right now, just have a constraint for u0. Okay, so we can move on to the second step 
and that is our second equation. Okay, so again, let us see which one will cancel. Okay, so the second one will cancel, right? The gradient of uh, u0 with respect to y, okay, is zero. So we just have what? We just have the expression involving the first term, and that is equal to zero. So we want now to have an expression for u1, okay? That's our aim. So we will have negative divergence y of a of y. So that is equal to zero. Okay. So we will have Okay. <clears throat> All right. Okay. So Let us take a look at the U1. So again, let us take X as a parameter. And uh, we have, we can observe that the gradient of U0 or the derivative of U0 with respect to X can be expressed as the summation of the partial of u0, okay, with respect to xi of x, ei, okay? What is ei? Okay, ei is the uh, base vector in Rn, okay? Okay, and now let us, this is uh, what uh, Professor Donato is uh, telling earlier, let us introduce some omega i, which is an element of the H1 periodic uh, uh, functions, okay, but uh, I will not uh, so deal so much, so tomorrow uh, it will be discussed. Uh, so, which is unique up to uh, the additive constants and it is the solution of the problem Okay. Okay. So let us take omega i element of H one per unique to up to the additive constants. The solution of this equation. Okay. So how can we? Ha I mean, this is our original one, okay? And we have this equation, okay? So by linearity, no? By linearity, we can express, okay? Our solution, u1 of xy, okay? Using this uh, omega i, okay? We can express it by linearity, u1 of xy will just be the summation of the partial of u0 with respect to xi of x omega i of 
y i from 1 up to n okay from our original uh, equation and the solution of that um, equation ah y sorry yeah sorry okay Which one? U zero. Uh huh. This one. No, it's uh, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. I think <laughs> it's okay. Okay, right? Okay. So actually, I have the summary here. So you can express u one in terms of u uh, zero in this way. Okay. All right. So the summary is uh, in that slide. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. So let us, of course, finish the thing and uh, move to step three. Okay. So what do I need? I need this. So I will not erase that. I don't need this. Okay. So now let me write in the following way. Okay, I need the gradient y u two because I need okay I need u two. So I just have to. I'm sorry, I will copy so you can see. So. Okay, I'll copy here. So A of Y. Is it okay or I will leave? Uh, it's okay. I am discussing step by step. Okay. Okay, I just wrote it uh, in this form. Okay, but it's the same. Okay, because I want to concentrate on the left hand side. Okay, I want it to be disappeared in the scenario. Okay. Okay. So, note. Okay, if we integrate the left hand side, so we have so using Green's formula, okay, we will come up with so Ah, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Okay. Okay. So we have this. Okay. Right? 
by Green's formula. So we have uh, that expression, but, but what happened? U2 is periodic, right? So because of that, this is simply zero. Okay? So now U2 disappeared in the scenario. Okay? So we have the right hand side equal to zero. Right? We have the right hand side equal to zero. And so So we will have negative the yes, sorry. Why it's zero? Yes. Okay. Not just you two. Yes. Yeah. Okay. 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 So. Okay. So. Uh huh. So zero. So we are on the right hand side. Okay. So what we do? No? So we have we will be left of this expression. So So I'm taking the integral with respect to y on y. Okay? And this will be equal to the integral of f of x dx. So why is that so? Okay? Why is that so? So we just we are left with this one. Where is this one? Okay? Where did it go? So why are we left with that expression only when we take the integral on y? Why? <laughs> Rabbi is a <laughs> okay. So where is that? If we take the integral over y of the whole expression, of course that is zero. But I take the integral of both sides, okay, over y, okay, because of the, uh huh, yeah, which is periodic, okay, so u1 is periodic with respect to y, okay, so like in the previous case, it is zero, okay. Yeah. It is divergence of y. Ah. So, yes. so the second term you are taking to the rights. Ah, yeah. That's why they can, this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. No, the integral. No, the integral. No, the average is. Mm -hmm. If you put x, the average is. Yeah, 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 correct. If it is x, it's not zero. Yeah, yeah. Okay, but uh, I missed the uh, copy. Yeah. Okay. Errors are good. <laughs> okay. And so, of course, this is just f of x. Okay. 
All right. Okay. So now we can substitute. We have this expression. Okay. And u1 is given by this. Right? So if we take the derivative with respect to y, we just have the derivative of this with respect to y, omega i. Okay? Because this is uh, just in terms of x. And you have this. You don't... Uh, ah, this is uh, y. Sorry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay? So by substitution of the thing, what do we have? So we will just have negative divergence x. Look, we just have negative divergence x. Okay? And we can express this in terms of this one. Okay? And so we, we can write it in this form. Negative divergence of a star gradient x u0. You can, okay, this you have the gradient x u0 here. You also have this expression here, okay? So, you have A asterisk as the effective diffusion tensor, and it will be given by this formula, okay? Because you have A of Y here, right? Plus the summation, which is, you are coming from uh, this one, okay? You can uh, you can do that easily, okay, by substitution. It's okay. So, well, we can stop here, I think, okay, because later we will um, describe the effective diffusion tensor. What's the property? Is it also positive definite? Okay, okay. Oh, that's the last slide for this one. So, our <laughs> our uh, expression, okay, can be simplified into this form. In terms of u zero, we have this uh, equation, and uh, of course, the limit u zero must be zero on the boundary, having the Dirichlet boundary condition. Okay, and uh, yeah, that's the next. <laughs>